Hi friends, here is a very interesting interview question about outliers and robustness to outliers. So first I'll explain the, the, the question itself. Then I will request you pause the video, try to think of the solution, but I'll also explain the solution itself in this video, right? So imagine you have a data set which you're going to use to train your model. Let's assume, it, let's assume that the data set contains pairs of Xi and Yi. Xi are your data points. Xi is d-dimensional, real valued. Yi is also real valued, which means what you're going to train using this training data is a regression model because your Yi is a real valued. Now imagine, imagine you have a model that you build. Let's assume the model is called F. Think of this model as something like, let's say, a linear regression or a neural network model with some weights. Okay. So let's assume this is your model F. Your model takes each Xi as input and it predicts what Yi is. So the predicted value is called as Yi hat. Right. So this is the setup. This is a problem setup. This is a standard problem setup of any regression problem. Now, while solving this regression problem, let's say using a linear regression or using a neural network based model, let's assume you have two choices. Either you can use your loss as L1, I'll define what L1 is, or you can use L2. Now, L1 is defined as summation over all the i's, the absolute value of the difference between yi, which is the actual value, and f of xi, which is a predicted value predicted by your model f. Right? So, this is how you define your L1. Similarly, let's assume there is an other loss called as L2. Okay, This L2 is summation over all i, all of your training points basically, yi minus f of xi whole squared. Okay, So this is, this is sort of like, like your squared loss. Right? This is very similar to, this is, this is your squared loss in, in, uh, in regression. Right? So this is, this is like an absolute value of uh, the difference between yi and f of xi. Now, given the choice, you can either use, let's say, L1 loss or you can use L2 loss. Now, the most important question here is, which of these, which of L1 or L2 would work better if the data set B contains lots of outliers? Right? I hope the question is clear. So, you have a standard regression setup. You can either use L1, L1 loss, which is defined as this, or you can use L2 loss, which is defined as this. Now, which one would we use if you know that the data set contains outliers and which one would you use or which one would work better in reality, right? If the data set B contains lots of outliers, that's the question. So, I would recommend you pause this video here and think about how to, how to answer this. Again, this is about applying the foundational mathematics to solving real world problems because outliers are a daily reality in real world machine learning. And of course, you should, you should decide whether you will use L1 or L2 and you should be able to justify mathematically or geometrically why you are using L1 or L2. Okay. So I'm assuming that you've spent some time thinking about it. Here, here is how we, here is one way of solving it. Okay. So let's, let's write it down. Okay. So let's say yi minus f of xi, let's call it as ei or in other words, error i. Because this f of xi is nothing but y i hat. This is what the model predicted, right? The difference between the actual observed value and the predicted value, we are just calling it ei. Now, what are outliers basically? If you think logically, what is an outlier? Your model tried to predict given the data. Again, this model can be a neural network model or a linear regression model, whatever model you want to use. But whatever you do, these outliers are misbehaving. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't fit into the model very well. Or in other words, your EI is typically very large. That's one way of defining an outlier in this context. Right? Now, so this, this is the first observation that you have to make. Okay? That outliers basically mean that your EIs, which is nothing but the difference of YI and YI hat, are large. That, that's how you can think of outliers mathematically. The second key observation here is this. So, let's assume I draw EI on x-axis and the loss on y-axis. How does my L1 look like? Look at this. If you plot your L1 and L2, your L1 looks like the absolute value function. Right? This is your absolute, your L1 is nothing but your absolute value function, right? So, it will be like a straight line here, straight line here. 45 degree lines, right? Again, remember the x-axis here is EI, right? So, L1 will look like this green line, which is straight lines, 
Okay, it's a straight 45 degree line. It's a straight 45 degree line. Now, how does L2 look like? Look at this. If you write, if you, you can write these formulations of L1, L2 like this. L1 is nothing but summation over i. It is E of absolute value of EI. Right? What is L2? It is summation over all i, EI squared. So, if you look at it with respect to EI, the loss itself is squared, which means it looked like a parabola like this. It looked like a parabola like this, right? So, L2 will look like this parabolic curve, while L1 loss with respect to E1 looks like the straight line. Now, look at this. Here, I mean, this is the second key observation that you have to make. The third most important the third most important step in solving this is this. Imagine if EI is very large. Let's assume EI is very, very large. Let's assume EI is here. Some large value. Okay. So, let's assume your EI is large. Again, uh, when I say EI is large, I mean it could be a large positive value or it could be a large negative value. That, that's important. That's important. Okay. Because if you're, if this is your axis EI, let's assume, let's assume you go here. This, your outliers will mostly have a very large positive value or it will have a very large negative value. So, most of your non-outlier points, the error of yi minus f of xi will be small, which means they will, they will lie somewhere in this region, right? Somewhere, I mean, I'm, I'm just approximately pointing this. But the outliers will have a large positive value or a large negative value. I have to make that very clear, which means they'll most likely lie in this region, in these, in these very far away regions. Because the errors are high, either large positive or large negative values. Now, notice that if, if, if the error is large, what happens? Your L2 is growing quadratically. Your L2 is growing very, very fast as compared to L1. Look at this. Look at this point itself. Look at this point. At this point, your L1 is smaller, significantly smaller than your L2. Look at this. Your L1 is significantly smaller than your L2, which means for an outlier point, whether it is a outlier with a large positive value or a large negative value, even here, imagine you take a out, suppose Im imagine there is an outlier point here, the L1 will be significantly smaller than your L2, L2 will be significantly larger than L1. So now what happens is, if you have lot of outliers, the contribution of the outlier, again, because what do you do? You have a loss, what do you do in regression? You try to minimize these loss with respect to some parameters like weights and biases that you have. That's how you solve these problems, right? Similarly, if you have L2, L2 loss, what are you trying to do? You're trying to minimize this with respect to some weights and biases in your neural network or your linear regression model, right? So now, look at this. Outliers will contribute less to this loss if you're using a L1 or absolute value function here rather than a quadratic function. If you're using a squared function, its contribution to the loss is more because its contribution, because it, remember, it's a quadratic curve, right? It's a quadratic curve, right? L2 corresponds to a quadratic curve. L1 corresponds to a straight line. A quadratic function grows significantly faster than the absolute value function. So what is happening here? The impact of outliers is significantly more with re, if you're trying to minimize the L2 loss than if you're minimizing the L1 loss which in other words means L2 will be more impacted by your outliers than L1. And hence, in this case, it is preferable to use this L1 loss than the L2 loss if you want a better model. Right? At the end of the day, you don't want your outliers to impact your model. Right? In your minimization process, you're trying to compute the parameters of the model. You want, you want these outliers to impact less. Right in L2, in the case of L2, it, they are impacting more than L1. So, in this case, it is preferable to use L1 loss than L2 loss. Again, this whole thing can be explained very easily by just using this simple geometry. If, if, you, if you can just quickly realize that yi minus f of xi is ei, and what, what does what does how do outliers correspond to eis? What is the plot of this L1 loss, L2 loss? And if you can just connect this optimization concept here. It's very simple to answer. Now, here is a quick follow-up question. Okay, those of you who are interested. Okay, so to this, to the same setup. Okay, to the same setup. In lot of interviews, the interviewer typically starts with a problem and extends the problem in multiple directions. Right. A quick follow-up question for this problem is: Which of the which of the following, which of L1 or L2 will result in a more sparsity in weights? 
if you if let's assume your model f is let's say a neural network model which has a bunch of weights right and you're trying to minimize these weights so let's assume we decide let's assume you have a bunch of weights in your neural network model right whether you you can either use l1 loss or l2 loss right l2 loss of course there will also be biases here you can either minimize l1 loss or l2 loss which of these l1 loss or l2 loss will result in a significant will result in more sparsity will result in more sparsity in your weights if you, if 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 your model itself is a neural network right please pause and think about this follow up question so i'm hoping that you've given it some thought many people would directly jump and say hey l1 would result in sparsity because they remember that's concept that l1 regularization results in sparsity that's what they remember right and they will quickly jump to the conclusion that using l1 loss will result in sparsity which is incorrect because remember here the loss itself is l1 loss or l2 loss we have not regularized either of these models the sparsity of the model will depend on the regularization here see imagine to this to this if you add some lambda multiplied by some regularization if you add l1 regularization here imagine if you add l1 regularization here then you would get sparsity okay the sparsity is not dependent on the loss but on the regularizer okay in in the, in this context in the definition of the problem we didn't say anything about regularization we only talked about l1 loss versus l2 loss right and what are we computing this is l1 on the residuals this again by the way these eis are also sometimes referred to as residuals or errors right so this is not a l1 regularization on the weights or biases this is l1 regularization on the residuals or errors so neither of these models is guaranteed to give you any sparsity because sparsity depends on regularizing the weights and biases and not the loss function itself that's an important catch that you should get here okay i hope i hope uh, these two questions gave you some idea on how to think about translating the mathematics translating the geometric intuition that you have built to solving and attacking real world problems like how do you make your model more robust to outliers